You know, I think I finally figured out what your problem is. You're alive, sure, on a technical level, but you're not living, you feel me? I woke up in a bed of pregnant rats this morning, and I feel great. You know why? A little thing called perspective, bitch. Sway. Check that out. I've got so much perspective, you couldn't even perceive it. It's how I look down on you all the time. Sure, I may go through six-month-long blackouts occasionally, but I believe that they often leave me in better places than where I started. And I am not a spiritual man, but in the last one, I dreamed I was a mouse. You ever fuck with DayQuil and pre-workout? Don't just seize the day. Mount it like a rabid animal asserting dominance and fuck it. Cause fucking during the day leaves you the night. And that's when all the magic happens. It is 4 a.m. What's up, my neighbors? I'm Lyle Rath. And this is Pre-Game Discharge, the loudest video game show to ever scream across the darkness. Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC came screaming in Latin with a trailer that shows off tons of new enemies, abilities, and locations. This is looking like a big expansion, and it's 40 bucks, so it's definitely priced like one, and it's coming out in June. I'm excited to fire up the old spray devil again. It's been too long. If there's one thing the kids love, it's giant businesses conglomerizing. Epic Games and Disney are collaborating on a quote all new games and entertainment universe, which in English probably boils down to Fortnite Kids. Disney's also invested $1.5 billion into an equity stake in Epic, so while the rest of the industry seems headed for a crash, and we will get to that later, rest assured that the unstoppable perpetual money colossus will churn on until you die, whether you're below it or inside it. And those are the only two choices. This also kind of got lost in the Peter Griffin of it all, but Fortnite brought back Guitar Hero a couple months ago. It's actually kind of crazy how Guitar Hero, or more specifically Rock Band 2, was like a permanent staple at every house party for a while, and then one day it just fucking vanished. But since Epic Games bought harmonics, it's just just as jarringly rematerialized, and now Goku is singing Nine Inch Nails songs with Solid Snake and Rick Sanchez like it never left. We're even getting third party plastic instruments again. This one's called the PDP Riff Master. So, you know, it ain't all bad. You could even say nature is healing in a very fucking bizarre way. Death Stranding 2 got a kooky little trailer. It's also called Death Stranding 2 on the Beach now. This shit is so fucking confusing. We're smoking bridge bait. Baby. Blowing BT bubbles with the tank fluid. Got so fucked up I drank it out of the bong. I predicted 2030s culture wars high on tardigrade pussy milk. Seriously though, I have no idea what's going on here. I just know this guy has a thunder guitar and I want that. Not in the game. Hideo Kojima also came out and announced Fizzent. He was like, it's a game and it's a movie, but also it's more like Metal Gear and also I almost died? What? I just learned mortality exists and also that people want to have sex with a gorilla at the zoo. Yeah, that's great. Let's just keep letting this guy bounce off the walls until he breaks down or the walls break down. Either way, society wins. Sonic 3 and Knuckles got a trailer, as in they both got trailers. I am not referring to the game Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I am referring to the film Sonic 3 and also Knuckles the TV show. See, the thing about jokes is they become funnier once you explain them. Anyway, Sonic 3 just got a logo and admittedly a sick as fuck little orchestral sting of live and learn. The Knuckles Show, starring Idris Elba Knuckles, got a bigger trailer. It is a Paramount Plus show. I don't know about you, but I'm still in the how dare you start another one of these phase with Paramount Plus. But I mean, if you got it, you can watch it. I won't get mad at you. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Join America's number one meal kit today and get fresh ingredients 
delicious and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. Meal planning and shopping takes time and effort, especially if you're trying to eat healthy. HelloFresh's recipes are pre-portioned, quick and easy to follow, and there are a ton of options to choose from, no matter what your lifestyle. Dig into HelloFresh's biggest menu yet with more than 45 dinner options and a bunch of breakfast ones too, which is convenient because right now you can click the link in the description or use my code and get free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. So what are you waiting for? You think a box of food is just gonna show up on your porch by itself? Cause that could be your reality. I'd go as far to say even that it should be. Nintendo did a partner showcase Nintendo Direct. It wasn't here, don't ask. Featuring a bunch of titles the average person has probably never heard of and won't care about, and a lot of ports. Some highlights included Shin Megami Tensei Vengeance, or that V is supposed to be a five, so Shin Megami 5 5 Vengeance, I guess. A sort of definitive edition of Shin Megami 5 V, so you gotta buy a whole entire game again instead of just DLC. A remaster of Epic Mickey, a game featuring everyone's favorite rodent fighting against the evils of entering public domain. World of Goo 2, you're gonna be in a world of goo punk. And other crabs treasure, Dark Souls, but you're a crab. And Endless Ocean Luminous, a multiplayer underwater snorkelman game that caters to that phobia of seeing big things in the dark that a lot of people have and I think is sick. The Borderlands movie got a trailer and it sure does look like it is, huh? Now don't let me stop you from upvoting your epic ownage comparison photo of a cosplayer looking better than a multi-million dollar dollar Hollywood movie, but just remember that you fucking asked for this when you let Sonic into the club. It does kind of look like it's swinging to be more of a straight up comedy first and an action movie second. I don't know if that excuses it so much as it just distracts from it with something worse. Time to make it rain! with your body parts. Oh yeah, also Jack Black is in this. I don't know if that's because he was right for the role or if that's just the only lesson they took from the Mario movie. Sonic X Shadow Generations got announced. Sonic X Shadow Generations is a remaster of Sonic Generations that also includes Shadow. Sonic X Shadow. As someone who's been Googling Sonic X Shadow relentlessly in anticipation for this game for the last 16 years, I sure am glad Sonic X Shadow is being made available to the masses. What a time to be alive. Kyle, every time I say Sonic X Shadow, flash some horrible Sonic Shadow soft yaoi thing. Thank you. <laughs> you can leave me in asking that. I don't give a fuck. There's a new Silent Hill demo preview game thing on the PS5 called Silent Hill The Short Message. You can beat it in about an hour and change, and it's free. It's basically Konami going, we can do PT without Kojima, see? And, well, no, you can't, frankly, but again, free is free. You can't argue with that. But you can debate it in the marketplace of ideas until you lose money. Intellectually. The Silent Hill 2 remake also got a trailer that shows off the combat. Now, I say this full well knowing that accurately remaking a beloved slow-paced psychological survival horror with tank controls as a modern AAA game that satisfies everyone is a Herculean task that I would not wish on anybody other than a studio paid millions of dollars to do it. And I don't know how you'd do it, if you even can do it, but uh, fuck it, let's copy Resident Evil, I guess is the angle. Probably needed something bolder than that, but good luck, I guess. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth got a big-ass 20-minute overview trailer and a playable demo ahead of its launch later this month. Did it need a full playable piano in it? I don't know, but it has one. I swear, Square Enix just has people making shit. Remember that Final Fantasy XV demo where you're a child in a giant living room and you turn into a giraffe? Why make that? Don't make that. The Cyberpunk sequel might have multiplayer. This is one of those things that sounds really cool until any sense of pattern recognition kicks in and makes you realize multiplayer is a big expensive resource hogging endeavor that usually just ends up making games suck. But I could see this being really cool if they do it the right way. We're talking two guys, four guys max, no destiny randomly instanced open zones, no fucking Dark Souls invasions, no stripped down multiplayer sandbox you load into with 60 other players, no whatever suicide squad is. Just plop the other player into the game, show them in the background of cutscenes, and if you want to be extra spicy, let them talk to people like in Baldur's Gate. That's all I want. Your Saints Row 
2. Your dying light. Your Borderlands 2, but less annoying. Can you do that for me, sweetheart? Can you make that happen, toots? For a while, there's been talk about an Indiana Jones game, and now we've finally gotten to see it. It's a first-person action game developed by the team that made the latest Wolfenstein, so rest assured, Indy will be brutalizing more than enough Nazis to atone for whatever weird, possibly racist shit in the bedroom got him so questionably good with that whip. This is one that's probably gonna come down to how memorable and frequent the big set-piece moments are. Everything here is looking solidly passable. And also, there's no AI Indiana Jones voice, which is kind of what I feel figured they'd do. As far as I could tell, at least, it's just Troy Baker doing a really good impression. Do you have any idea how old that was? Smite, the world's only fun MOBA that none of my friends play, is getting a sequel, which looks like basically the same game built in Unreal Engine 5. I don't know how many people who have spent a lot of money on Smite skins feel about that, because, again, I don't know anyone who plays it. But it probably was long overdue, especially if the old game was, you know, just held together by a bunch of globs. You don't want your game being held together together by globs. You gotta fix it. It can't be globs. It just can't. It can't be globs. No Rest for the Wicked did a feature with IGN that showed off eight minutes of gameplay. This one's looking pretty cool. It's from the developers of Ori, so it has that really nice painted look. Gameplay wise, it looks very Souls inspired, except it's this top down in a way that somehow still looks good type angle. This is probably one to keep your eye on. Hellblade 2 got a trailer of British people basically saying it's gonna be really, really good. Well, good and enthusiastically showing off all the rooms they have, like someone who just moved out of their parents' house. Which makes sense if you already had the context that the first game was mostly made with gorilla mocap in a spare conference room, but to everyone else, it's just like, yeah, dude, you got a fridge, that's cool, I wish I was you. I'm infinite jesting right now, yeah, I read. But it is genuinely better to be kept in the dark about this game because it's a psychological horror and the more of it you spoil, the less it can fuck with you. That is a really nice coffee table. Console wars are fucking dumb. They're maybe the most brain dead thing you can possibly do with your time, but they sure have been extra dumb lately. On the PlayStation end, the chairman of Sony basically said PlayStation would be quote unquote, aggressively focusing on multi-platform releases. And according to the financial report they just released, there will be no big first party exclusives releasing this entire year. There was also a comment made that the PlayStation 5 was entering the latter end of its life cycle, which is pretty awkward since people just stopped scalping them like last week. Meanwhile, there was a great panic that Xbox is dead because there were rumors that they were gonna allow some of the exclusive games onto PlayStation, which turned out to be true. Sea of Thieves, Grounded, Hi-Fi Rush, and Pentiment are coming to PS5. This matters to someone because, I don't know. The Nintendo shit cube. I play mostly PC and some of these never even registered to me as exclusives, but for whatever reason, it means Xbox specifically is dead and dying, even though Sony was saying basically the same thing. And there was so much panic over this that they did an emergency Xbox business live stream where they said, hey, chill, it's just a few games. We're not gonna say what they are. And then people freaked out more and then they said what they were and that's that list I gave you earlier. If this seems like nothing, it, it is. I think they just figured out that you can put your shit on another platform a few years later and make a bunch of money that way. I don't think it's anything Thing deeper than that. We finally got our first good look at Judas, and it's the most anything has looked like Bioshock in a while. That's not a dig either. Last Bioshock was what, 2013? We're about due for a new Bioshock. And this one's actually directed by Ken Levine, the guy who directed Bioshock. In fact, he's so into it, he makes people call him the Gyoshock. And if you don't, he has this taser that looks like a flashlight, and he pulls it out and he zaps you, and he goes, Still think I can't give you a Bioshock? I'm Ken Levine! Bleh. One of those things is true. But what I'm getting at is this game would be more Bioshock than another Bioshock at this point. A bunch of stuff we've already seen got new trailers. Princess Peach Works Multiple Jobs got a trailer where you get to see her change outfits between shifts to make ends meet. And Stellar Blade got a trailer where you get to see she ass. There were also more trailers for Visions of Mana, Rise of the Ronin, and Dragon's Dogma. Obsidian's been showing off a 
decent amount of their new game, Avowed, and it's probably worth noticing a little bit more thoroughly at this point. It's a first-person swords and sorcery action RPG, but it doesn't really remind me of Skyrim. It looks a little more dialed in action-wise. The little back of my mind hope is that it kind of invokes Dark Messiah might and magic, but I don't know, maybe that's wishful thinking. PlayStation VR 2 is getting a couple new games, a VR Metro game called Metro Awakening and a sword fighty fantasy game called Legendary Tales, which looks kind of sick in a way that I never thought I'd be invoking Dark Messiah twice in such quick succession, but you know what? I'm not mad at it. A gaming industry crash is coming. Maybe it's all the way here already. It snuck up on you and you didn't even notice. The AAA gaming industry is imploding with thousands of layoffs across every sector of gaming from Microsoft to Unity to Twitch. The giant conglomerate Embracer Group has just restructured a bunch of projects and studios completely out of existence with more on the way. Just since the beginning of the year, over 6,000 games industry jobs have been lost and it just keeps coming. So the question becomes, why? Last year was pretty much the best year for video games ever. So many good fucking games and they all seem to sell really well too. So what gives? Well, we could point to a lot of different things. Could be that game budgets have grown more and more bloated over the years. They were already starting to get really unsustainable and global inflation didn't help. Could be that it's just the nature of the job. Congratulations, you finished your game. All the work is done, so you're fired. Could be the live service bubble has officially popped. I'd like to say because gamers have learned better, but more realistically, it's just because there are way too many of them now and they take so much time and money that it's physically impossible for the potential audience to play all of them. And also China's started regulating them, which is a giant railroad spike through the center of that particular coffin. But at the end of the day, all that matters is that this line might have moved down and that's never allowed to happen. But you could just make a good game and people will buy it, I hear you say. Look at Baldergate. Look at Mario. Yes, idiot, but have you ever considered that if you make $900 million in profits this year, it doesn't matter because if you made a billion dollars last year, then this line moves down. And if the line moves down, what's even the point of making $900 million? Fire everyone! Close the company! If the line moves down, put it in the ground! Burn the $900 million for all I care! Call it a tax write-off! I love economy! And if you're sitting here like, that can't be how the world works. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here are the game releases for the month. I'm Lyle Rath, and this has been Pre-Game Discharge. We do new episodes at the end of every month, so come back next time for more. We also make cartoons around here. We got one coming out in the next week or so, and if you missed it, we did a funny little Pokemon parody. I'll put that on screen here. But yeah, go watch some funny cartoons. We put a lot of fucking work into them. Okay, bye.